You ready to rock? Relatively? No. Let's do it. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of AMZ Seller Real Talk. Sorry, I forgot the name of our podcast. Did you actually? It's only like, no, I made that up. I actually did remember it, but I was playing off a previous joke. Comical pause. Okay. Yeah, no. Um, So for anyone who doesn't know who I am, my name is Curtis Johnson, and I am the president of Managed by Stats, and uh, I have with me not Jade Coleman. It's kind of becoming a theme. That's right. My name's not Jade Coleman, this and I work here. <laughs> this is his, uh, her ever, <laughs> her ever elusive um, husband. No, she's the Justin elusive or one. no, 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 no. Whatever. Let's get on. It's the fine. List. People know who I am by now. Justin slash Dane and Coleman over here. Yeah. Um, and you've had a brand with Amazon for what? near 10 years now so well, not a not my own brand with amazon multiple i, I, I guess brands that yes. you've worked with or that kind of thing right yes but i actually started out doing what we're going to talk about today that's right and yes. we have with us um jason fladlian who is god such a long time friend of managed by stats it's it's he actually predates me by quite a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> with managed by stats as a at least as a partner of ours uh, yeah. Jason heads up uh, a company that probably a lot of you have heard of, which is Rapid Crush, as well as um, many, many other things, as well as Affiliate Triad, which I just recently you know, started working with you guys on a couple little projects. So we're very excited to have you on here because you've been in this area uh, for a very long time and have had your your you know fingers in many, many pies. And I looked like a pianist when I just did that. So uh, without any further ado, I, could just, I'm, I really we won't go there. We won't go there. We have with us Jason Fladlian. <laughs> Hi, the Jason. pleasure is mine, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, um, yeah. So, Jason, uh, as I was telling you earlier, I don't really know your background outside of uh, Rapid Crush. So why don't you tell us slash audience uh, a little bit about yourself, kind of like what is your history when it comes to Amazon? and just business really yeah it's actually funny i forget this but i was selling on amazon before fba was a thing so back in 2003 Mm -hmm. or 2004 i had a little record studio label thing uh in iowa of all places where i was trying to put music out there got me into business which it ultimately led me into marketing which i found more fascinating than the music but the way it worked back then is if you wanted to sell media on Amazon, that's the only third party sources that they mm-hmm. allowed to come in that were little guys and little gals is you would send them like two CDs and they would put it in their warehouse somewhere. And then if you sold like both of them, then they would ask <laughs> like five of them. Then you would send them five. It was a, huh. there was no flat files. Wow. There was no WYSIWYG <laughs> kind of fill in the blank and upload a product onto Amazon. None of the cool <laughs> stuff that all the, the kids these days take for yeah, granted. Right. Right? Jeez. Uh, that's how I started on Amazon way back in, I think it was 2004, if I can remember wow. correctly, somewhere around that period of time. And then like anything, I totally left it behind and never thought about it again for about nine years. Uh, And in in the meantime, it obviously grew into the 8 million pound gorilla, not the 800 pound gorilla. Uh, (laughs) And I went off and got into the digital space. I always loved digital products. Hey, listen, I can create an ebook. I don't have to pay anybody anything. I don't have to worry about logistics, shipping and all of that stuff. Uh, I'll just write a book and market it and sell it online. That's predominantly what I did. Uh, But the reality is what we discovered is two things. One thing is most of our customers don't want to do that. God bless them, by the way, right? Yeah, um, seriously. The more well known I become, the more I appreciate anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like yeah, you, you want to be able to walk through a mall and not get mobbed. Oh, yeah, and that doesn't yeah. happen so much. But the, the <laughs> idea of, I don't want to be on Facebook and social media and YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and whatever. Yeah new social media will pop up because there seems to be a new one every 13 seconds, right? I don't want to learn Clubhouse. That's the latest, greatest (laughs) craze, right? Um, I just want to do what I do when I want to do it. And then the rest of the time I'll do something else. And and so we, that was the first thing about it is our customers, because we try to serve the internet marketing community to give them the best uh, advantages for making money online. It's a real simple formula. If I can make you make more money than anybody else, you're going to do business with me more often and you'll do business with anybody else. And so that's kind of our 
our method to how we approach things. And so we would teach them all sorts of digital marketing strategies. Uh, and they were like, SEO, what? I can't even spell that, you know? And, and, <laughs> but people have done garage sales. People had used eBay. People had uh, mm. went to secondhand used stores, thrift stores, all that kind of stuff. They, they know physical products. They can pick it up mm -hmm. and drop it on their foot. Uh, whereas the digital marketing world, even today in 2021, um, is a big mystery to a majority of people. And yeah, so sure. we saw this and we were like, okay, our customers seem to be interested in us. Let's figure it out. Now let's just mm -hmm. sell them a shovel, right? Um, let's right. go dig for gold ourselves. And so we went into Amazon with the same approach that uh, Rapid Crusher that we do anything with, which is all or not at all. So we went all in, went through it turned over every stone, looked under every nook and cranny, outhouse, doghouse, penthouse. <laughs> and we were just, we were impressed by how much easier it was to make money online with Amazon than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Obvious in hindsight. It's kind of like how they yeah. invented the toilet and then like a hundred years later, they invented toilet paper. You know, it's everything's <laughs> obvious looking backwards. It's like uh, peanut but, butter and jelly. Like, how did you not come up with that earlier? How did that not just be a thing immediately, <laughs> right? And so the thing about Amazon, it makes sense in retrospect here is for every ebook or digital program or coaching program somebody buys, there's like a million people who are buying like a cutting board or a digital meat right. thermometer right. or a USB charger or any of the other millions of things that you can sell on Amazon. That's the first thing. Second thing is if you can't buy it on the toilet with one hand, it's a lot harder to sell. And so people on Amazon, they're just one click purchase credit card on yeah. file. Uh, the convenience is there. And even to this day, I remember mm -hmm. back in 2013, people are like, they're gonna catch up to Amazon. Um, you know, Amazon's biggest competitive advantage is two day free shipping to Prime members, of which yep. there are more Prime members that exist right now than people that own a gun, people that go to church. Yeah. Uh, it's almost the same amount of people who voted in the 2020 election. It's pretty close, it's like a toss up. This is how many people have Prime membership and they get two day or less free shipping. Now who can compete with that? Nobody, the only ones that come Wait. close are placed places like Walmart where they have a physical and that's store. that's the example though but like you yeah. would think that after they you know it's they've had what eight years now to try and catch up you would think that in that eight yeah. years some of these other guys would come to the party it's so interesting they that you try. bring this up and it, they try, right yeah. but you a would lot. but you would them. think you you look at you look at even you know Congress going after them saying antitrust antitrust but like if no one else can do it, are we just going to then not have it as a thing and break up Amazon and tell them they can't do it because no one else can seem to keep up? That seems, you know, I hope it's so, so crazy day. to me. <laughs> I hope they I, break up Amazon one day because it will get to the <laughs> point where it's so easy to make money on Amazon that somebody's got to step in and do it. So people look at yeah. this as like, oh my God, antitrust, this is going to be horrible. First of all, it's never going to happen. If it does happen, right. it'll be 10 years from now. But the reason it will happen is because Amazon just controls everything. And I like it. The more Amazon controls things from a seller perspective, the more money we make. The more money we yeah. make, other people make more money. It's funny they call this antitrust. You know who the most trusted brand is in the world? <laughs> Amazon. Consumers <laughs> trust Amazon more than any other brand. It's not like the Microsoft days where you're like the evilness of, of the big corporation. Yeah. I guess I'll deal with them because I have no or other Or we're option. talking about standard oil. You know what I mean? Like right. it's we're a very different sort of thing. Here, right? People are <laughs> yeah. just like, they have a benevolent dictator that they, they really enjoy. Yeah. They're like, Thank we you really enjoy time. you <laughs> dictating Jeff Bezos. So just keep doing your thing. Except as, as a two days buyer. or less, right? For free. Yeah. Okay. Or you Give me a drone, get it here in a day. I'm good. It takes, it takes, it's too hard to compete with. And one of the reasons that yeah. Amazon was able to do this is because unlike places like Walmart or Jet, like anybody here who's tried to list their product on Walmart, um, yeah. you have it's to like submit blood samples, stool samples, <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to go back and they to don't the even... genealogical tree of your 15 grandfathers <laughs> before you and then they uh, might accept awesome. you, right? And they didn't even have a UI for it. You had to pay for something else. You had to in card it in crazy. stone tablet, right? And send it on yeah, the yeah. back of a mule to get it to them. And then they processed <laughs> it in 15 years, you know? And Amazon was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you got a pulse? All right, go ahead and sell on our, our platform, right? Right.
Right. So, yeah, so it's so absurd that, that they haven't caught on, honestly. It's almost like they're trying to be so exclusive that they've excluded everybody out of the platform. Except themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah which yep. is fairly stupid. That's pretty exclusive. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty exclusive. Okay. Me only. Amazon, Amazon is where people buy stuff online. So if I want to sell stuff online, unless I want to make things harder than they have to be, I'm going to utilize Amazon. And so our yeah. goal then is to figure out you know, it was easy, gentlemen, when, when we started at Amazon, there was one approach that was documented that everybody knew about. And we rallied behind it. We we're part of the reason it got so famous because we sold like $40 million worth of that stuff. Um, right. And there was no other option. You did it this way and that was it. You either followed the process or you didn't. There was one treasure map and there was one treasure. Uh, but yeah. then in the span of the last, you know, seven, eight years, a lot of people said, man, people will buy Amazon stuff. Let me sell Amazon courses. And you might say to them, well, do you have any experience in Amazon? Mad details. You know, I don't need to have any yeah. experience. I, I, no, but I have a sell. course. <laughs> yeah. Experience is optional, but selling you a course is mandatory. <laughs> and so we've had 100 or 200 or 500 different courses, uh, programs, approaches that have popped up. Some of them are good, by the way. Most of them are yeah. not good. And a few of them are horrendously bad. You know, sending your money on fire would probably be preferable to utilizing these courses. Possibly, but yeah. It, you know, it's a it's a very complicated jungle these days with lots of booby yeah. traps and lots of things that could go wrong. And so we've kind of shifted our vision from just because this was a really effective way that we understood Amazon through and built multiple seven figure brands ourselves in and helped a lot of people become super successful. Um, that was yesterday. What is it today, though, that makes sense? And mm -hmm. so we're very yeah, because it's a landscape that's always evolving. What you know, the Amazon that you started in 2010, the Amazon you started in 2003, Philip started in 2013. It's all different. It's yeah. all, it's evolved every single step along the way. Mm -hmm. We were, we were yeah. at a, we were at a, uh, did a, a virtual webinar and um, we went through kind of like the timeline and it's absurd the amount of things just in Amazon advertising that have changed in the last five years, let alone the, last the two. size and scope of Amazon. Yeah. It's a it's totally funny. different beast year after year. It's funny because on one hand, things are changing more than ever, but on the other hand, certain things are staying the same. So, you know, That's I don't want to give the impression to anybody that, I mean, there's two ways to play the Amazon game, essentially. One is you stay up to date on the latest, greatest changes, which we did for the first seven years. Every time a new patent was released, I was reading a patent, right? Every time something new came out, mm. I was on top of it and we were trying to leverage it. Uh, it's a good way to make short-term money. It's a great way to drive yourself insane in the long term, though. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So we switched up our approach over the years where we're like, what seems to be constant in, in Amazon? And here's the clues that we follow. And I think it's really powerful for anybody in Amazon to follow these clues. Let's go with what Amazon is most encouraging and least penalizing. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. You know, Amazon so you're has talking... done a lot of things over the years that don't seem to make sense, but it's Amazon's yeah. ball and it's Amazon's sandbox. It do whatever it wants. And so I'm like, what is Amazon encouraging? Can I do more of that? What is Amazon discouraging? How can I do less of that? Yeah, uh, antiseptic. The, the verdict is in. Amazon <laughs> is very much encouraging establish brands we're going to unpack yeah. that gentlemen because people hear that and they get freaked out it's not what you think it is but they, they when you like say established brands brand. brands specifically okay yeah yeah so established brands so i want to unpack that here in a little bit that have multiple sellers because the number one thing that has happening on amazon that is comical and we can explore this in relationship to the pandemic and COVID 19 is most often the reason somebody can't buy something is because it's not in stock in amazon now that's different right. than saying it's not in stock. It's actually right. in stock in a third party warehouse somewhere in like Wichita <laughs> gathering dust. Right. And it's not on Amazon. I've been to and Wichita. so nobody wins in that scenario. So Amazon was like, is like, we want multiple sellers selling the exact same product. We right. want them all on one listing and we want it to be for category products. Uh, meaning that when I think of blank, I think of this product. When I think of right. blank, I think of that product. Um, mm -hmm. That's what Amazon more than anything wants, which kind of sucks for a new seller because none of a us little bit, have in a, a sense. Yeah, in a sense, if we take it as is, like none of us are the Coca Cola of our of our industry or our category. None of us are the McDonald's uh, of what we sell. 
um, none of most of us don't even have a review, right? We're like, hmm, who's selling here? Well, this guy's got 14,000 reviews, which by the way, when we started, <laughs> it was rare that anybody had over 100 reviews. Right. Now mm -hmm. people have more reviews than I could sell of the product in a year. It's insane, right? right? So how do, how do we deal with about, that situation? Talking about product reviews, right? Not yeah. seller yeah. account reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the, Either some or, of these accounts have- Either or, mostly have, like when a consumer yeah. says, okay, uh, when push comes to shove, am I going to buy a product that has 14,272 reviews or am I going to buy a yeah, product that has 12. three reviews yeah, and yeah. it looks yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. a Chinese manufactured and yeah. owned brand based on the language that's on the listing yeah. itself, right? All of your bases <laughs> are belong to us. Yeah, literally. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, you just so, dated you know, the, yourself. The days you of us that? really <laughs> going from a keyword optimization, let's rank it on the first page of Amazon, which made us a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I love yeah. that approach. Uh, but Amazon's kind of like, yeah, we're not super excited about that anymore. Uh, sure. And so, so what do you do? It's interesting. Now, but it almost sounds like you're you're singing the swan song for uh, private, private labels. labels. But I I know you. You're you you. I don't feel like that's you. Is that am I well, hearing I, that I right? I, I love yeah. private label, um, but I love money too. So it's like yeah. I want to do the things that make me the most amount of money. Now I will tell you uh, guys, I've seen this play out in the market so many times because I try to study consumer psychology more than anything in business. It seems to really help me out a lot. Is sometimes mm. people will only take money if they can identify with a label. So I will only do money if I'm a private label seller, or I will only do money if I'm a wholesaler, or I will only do money mm. if I'm an arbitrager, right? And it's like, I don't care about the label, I care about the money. And so when private label makes sense, we do private yeah. label. And there's certain absolute instances where private label makes total sense. But when mm -hmm. we want to do money in the way Amazon prefers and the way we can get the biggest bang for our buck, especially in the short term, or especially if we're spinning up and we're brand new on Amazon, we also explore and more often than not, we find ourselves nowadays uh, leaning on reseller, but it's not one or the other, right? We're just like, mm -hmm. cool, your money, your money, your money, you all can live together, you all can coexist mm -hmm. peacefully, and you can in fact all help each other. So let's mm -hmm. go. And that's the approach that we're taking these days. What we try to do is say, what do we learn as private label sellers that we can apply within the ecosystem of what Amazon is most encouraging and rewarding these days, which is having sellers sell branded products that in that category are the most well-known, most obvious first choice go-to type of products. Okay, okay, you said something that I feel like we need to double back because I think anyone who's sold for any given amount of time is going to have caught this and, and have a question mark because you said private label, arbitrage, and wholesale. Mm -hmm. Well, there's like, I, I and here's the clarity on this. We we just had a podcast with um, Dylan. So if you, if you guys on YouTube are, are wondering what I'm talking about, go one podcast back from this. Yeah. And he, he talked about this, but... Um, why don't you, for anyone who's watching this that hasn't heard that previous podcast, what what are we talking about as a difference between arbitrage and wholesale? And then also the other thing that I wanna make sure we don't forget to touch on is you said there is a time and a place for private label and I wanna, yep. I wanna yeah, touch on that as well. I Those guess. are the two things that I see we need to make sure we touch on before we let you get out of here. And <laughs> and what did you what did you see and what did you find that led you to that decision? I Ooh, wanna know that. And I, I like wanna that. know the story of the painting behind you because I've now seen it four or five times and you need to tell me about it. That doesn't have to be. Uh, and we gotta talk about brands some point. too because brands yeah, are not oh what people God. think they are, okay? Yeah, so, so let's, it let's, is, let's, uh, let's, yeah, we've got another four hours, I guess, based yeah. on that agenda <laughs> alone. <laughs> Let's define. It won't be four hours. Here. We're good. So, yeah. Okay. So let's just start with the obvious: Ar arbitrage versus wholesale. And sometimes I'll use the term wholesale and re resell interchangeably. But I'm referring to okay. the same thing when I say wholesale or resell. Um, arbitrage is essentially I will over simplify it, but everybody will know what I'm talking about. Uh, say mm -hmm. one day you go down uh, to walmart or target and there's this huge discount hey if you buy a case of this shampoo you're gonna get it for half off and you pull up your app and you say oh my god on amazon this thing doesn't have a half off deal so i can buy it straight off the shelves at store a go home list it on amazon and i will make the difference between what i paid for it up front and what it mm -hmm. sold for on amazon mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of brilliance with that model 
I mean, sure. what's your upfront cost to get started? It could be as little as a dollar. If you find one product for a dollar in store A or B or C that you can sell on Amazon for $10, you pocket whatever after the expenses are, you could start up a business part-time, one dollar, mm -hmm. while you're already out shopping, while you're taking care of the kids or the dog or the cat, maybe you make a little side cash, right? Um, right. And, and so that that is the model. Now, Amazon doesn't like this model. Let's just call it what it is. Why okay. does Amazon not like this model? Well, gee, let's, let's think back to when the pandemic first locked down and toilet paper was more precious than gold and sanitizer. There was a guy who drove across half the country stocking up on sanitizer, right? But what it does yep. is it takes advantage of supply and demand situations and it doesn't make Amazon look good. It makes Amazon look like a bully because Amazon now you're overcharging for based on certain situations. So that's the, the right away. I'm not interested in arbitrage for that fact. But here's a, here's a here's you know the, the other, other reason though. The other reason though, yeah. if we look at it, because like business is business. If we look at it from a strict numbers perspective, it cuts Amazon out when it comes to Prime. Yeah. So, so in, there's that's a lot of other things too. But let me tell you the other reason I don't like it. Because um, uh, by the way, I'm not. I'm not discriminatory t towards any of these models. I, all of them have advantages and disadvantages and all of them have a time and place and some of them are more interesting than others. But here's the yeah. main reason why I am not uh, interested in arbitraging for anybody that I can help. Because I have now looked at hundreds of customers or maybe even thousands who have came to Amazon from a retail arbitrage background. And mm -hmm. they got that thousand yard death stare, right? They've seen some stuff. <laughs> Um, they, some of them have been successful. And in fact, the more successful they were at retail arbitrage, the more post-traumatic Amazon disorder that they suffered from, right? Yeah, they've um, been to a dark place, it's, it's a darker it. place than the dark of most people saw. P, uh, it's uh, P sad. <laughs> yeah, I like that. P sad, right? Post-traumatic uh, Amazon disorder, P tad or something like that, P -tad, right? So, yeah. so the thing is, I hope you fail if you try arbitrage because at least you won't suffer emotional trauma around the way because if you succeed, you will. Uh, and, yeah. and, and so it's just, it is not something that's scalable. Now, if, if you are broke right. and if you absolutely have to make ends meet, by all means do it as a yeah. temporary solution. Think of that as the unemployment benefits that you would get in the meantime before you get back on your feet. Uh, but yeah. the good news about it, retail arbitrage is that you have some experience at least with Amazon. You know, like, like if my kids went to work at McDonald's, I would think that's great because they would see a multi-billion dollar business firsthand, how they run operations. There's a lot to learn there, right? But I don't yeah. want them to make a career out of being a fry cook either. So. Um, it's a good thing to get experience with Amazon, but it's certainly not where you want to make your home. Your home. So that's right, that's right. arbitrage, where you try to find something over here that you can buy for low and then sell it for high over there. Now, right. wholesaling, retailing. Okay, let's let's think about it from this perspective. So let's go back to a brand like Coca Cola, which is the most recognized brand in the world, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, and in obviously in the soft drink market. Um, there is no Coca Cola store. Like I don't go to the Coke store to buy my Coca Cola. Um, right. I buy my Coca-Cola through distributors, essentially. Uh, I buy my Coca-Cola from Ralph's here in Southern California or Hy-Vee if I was back in Iowa. All my Midwestern <laughs> people know what I'm talking about, right? Or, or Publix, buy, right? For anyone. Yeah, oh, yeah. Publix on the East Coast. The East Coast right? <laughs> uh, I will buy it from, from Walmart. I will buy it in an overpriced fountain version of it that's yeah. sprayed into a cup when my kids are having a birthday party back oh, when yeah. they could do that pre-COVID, right? Uh, we will buy them at sporting <laughs> events when we used to be able to go to those places, right? Uh, and restaurants and all that kind of stuff. That's that's how we buy our Coca-Cola, through third parties, essentially, yeah. that distribute the product. So Amazon is also a distributor. And unlike mm -hmm. a local distributor, anybody in the world can distribute to anybody in the world. It's completely changed the game. And a lot of people yeah. don't realize that. Uh, and so, so ultimately, if you think about it, the world is an extremely complicated place. So I want you to imagine one person who can do all the following. They can create the product, right? They can mm -hmm. get the product manufactured. They can then get that product to the locations where consumers would buy it. They can then do the advertising and marketing to get that presence known that people should buy this thing. 
then they have to fulfill it. Then they have to take care of customer service. And then they have to do product extension by launching other products because nobody can really run a business on one product, right? Right. Um, there's only one company in the world I've seen actually pull that off. Um, yeah. And it's Apple. And they are the richest company in the world by about a trillion dollars. Yeah, dollar, followed by right? maybe Tesla. Yeah, maybe, Tesla right? would be and an it, example where they kind of have their own whole chain and guess who just topped the richest man in the world, right? Jeff well, Bezos, right? at least, uh, yeah. And well, the reason why right is around. they're also a public company. So they're valued yeah. on what people think they're worth, not what they're actually exactly. worth. So they can sell yeah. a million less cars than GM and be worth a <laughs> hundred times what GM is. See, they're playing a different game of economics. It's an absurd now, I wish game, all of us yeah could play the game with those same rules, right? But unfortunately, the lesser of us, we got to make our money the old fashioned way, actually selling right. products to people that it, that are just, and I own Teslas. <laughs> I've owned them for the last nine years, so I'm not poo-pooing yeah. on it, but that's a play in a game of a different economics. 99.999999% sure. of businesses have to specialize. And so right. a brand owner is almost always going to be atrocious at in-consumer marketing and going direct retail. Coca-Cola mm -hmm. doesn't know how the heck to reach you directly. They don't know how to do that. They rely on third party distributors in order to do that. And if you go mm -hmm. into Walmart and you count the number of Sam's Clubs or the Walmart branded products that are on there, and then you count all the third party, third party products that are on there, it's way more third party products than it is first party yeah. products. And so nobody can do it all. And even if you could do it all, you're gonna end up making less money doing it all. So let's and not do it. And you'll go crazy. Because you're doing it all. God. <laughs> yeah, you, Talk about you a can't brutal do business it. model. It's almost impossible. It's a once in a millennia type thing where a company can truly pull that off and be sustainable. So here's the beautiful thing. <laughs> a brand owner has given oftentimes his last 15 or 20 or 30 years to his product. He's lived it, he's ate it, he's breathed it, he's sleeped it, right? And one of the reasons his main benefit is he doesn't have to deal with pus pesky customers. You know, a lot of a lot of businesses yeah. said my business would be a lot better if I'd have to deal with customers, but he does yeah. it because he deals with distributors who then reach out mm -hmm. to customers. Uh, and he spends most of his time making sure his brand is well known and making sure that people understand why his product is superior or her product. And he goes out there and makes sure the manufacturing is done, make sure that they can pr create the product in mass. He has no right. time, even if he wanted to, to do anything else. But also most of these brands, they were pre Amazon created. And so right. old dogs don't want to learn new tricks and never has there been a more specific case than here on Amazon. Amazon is a right. foreign language to traditional commerce. And yeah, so yeah. therefore, they would much rather say, listen, you take care of that Amazon mystery black box thing. And so I can continue to do what I've always done. And this is what reselling is, or this is what you do. You go to a, a brand owner, uh, a product owner, and you say, listen, I'm not gonna buy it from you onesie twosies. Sell me a case mm -hmm. of that stuff. Sell me a carton of that stuff. Sell me an order initially of, you know, 100 units or 50 units or 200 units. Obviously, give me a discount because I'm buying in bulk, right? And then I will take care of selling this. And then you take the product right. from the wholesaler, you put it on Amazon, and then you sell it one at a time. But you don't really sell it because Amazon does the selling for you. Right. Uh, and specifically with the model that we're most excited about is, uh, is we already know that customers are buying this product, this very specific sure. product, not a product kind of like this, right? Um, a product that is exactly this. We know that they're mm -hmm. already buying it. And so it becomes more of a math equation. If I can buy it here in bulk, and then I can go on Amazon and put it on Amazon and sell it in piecemeal, how much money can I get returned? And in what time frame could that look like? And I didn't think this would work at first, guys, when I heard it for four years, I ignored this model and I'm kicking myself now because of it, because <laughs> it doesn't seem to add up. Like, yeah. why wouldn't the brand owner directly sell it on Amazon? Well, now I know better. I already told you guys why, because it's the old dog yeah. trick, right? But furthermore, what's the value add here? That's what I struggled with. All I'm doing is moving the cheese from here to there. It's kind of like retail uh, arbitrage, but sure. I'm doing it where I, I actually get permission from the brand and get the endorsement from the brand. Uh, and right. I, I just like, 
it seems too replicatable. What's the barrier to entry here? Why doesn't everybody do this? And and why, you know, wouldn't that erode any advantage I have if, if 15 guys are contacting all these suppliers and whatnot, uh, all these brand owners, all these product creators. Uh, and those were the things that really held me back um, initially with getting excited about this wholesale model where we find products that are undervalued on Amazon, meaning that they have room for another seller or two that are easy okay. to become that seller and that if you do nothing else, you increase the your money that's being made because of that leftover space involved, right? Um, that alone, I was like, wow, I, I can't believe that would work. But then if we take the private label knowledge that we know, uh, nine out of 10 of these brands, guys, their their images are, are Crap. a lot to be desired. Um, yeah. About 10% of the brands we encountered are violating at least one of Amazon's <laughs> yeah. naughty list activities right right right, right. Uh, and, and they get suspended and, so, and then they have no I, idea why you call they're, it a they're, naughty they're, list they're but it's running a risk so if we clean up the listing, list yeah you know i think of it more as a reseller is we're more a janitor than anything we yeah. get in the door <laughs> to resell a product and then we look clean at up this all the mess that all bathrooms the already made behind. and then yeah. the brand owner <laughs> inevitably loves us and says yeah. listen right I know Amazon's important. I can't ignore Amazon anymore. I've tried, it hasn't worked. I've been forced to deal with Amazon, but I don't wanna deal with it. Here's the keys to my Amazon business. You run it, you drive it. Uh, and, and that's a beautiful model. And that's what yeah. Amazon wants, because Amazon yeah. wants products that are not Chinese counterfeit knockoffs, right? right. I'm right. not talking private labeling where you call up a Chinese supplier and say, turn it red, switch this thing right. and put my label on it, right? That's a legitimate business model. Absolutely. What I'm yeah. literally talking about is Chinese sellers saying, let's pretend that we have this product when it's actually not that product and putting that on Amazon. That's a big issue that's on Amazon. Uh, and and so sure. Amazon, how do, they, how do they counteract that? They counteract that because people will be looking specifically for a brand, not a keyword research product. And in fact, keyword, uh, in terms of how people buy products these days on Amazon, we've now discovered less than 50% of it's done through search phrases alone. It used to be more, and we used to overvalue wow. that. And so now ask me how it's done. I'll tell you, I have no freaking idea. Who knows? Who Blogs, knows how it's done? links out but of videos. The opportunities to get search traffic uh, the amount of search traffic that results in a purchase today where they go to Amazon.com and say, like, you know, um, um, retractable dog leash. Mm -hmm. That is a small portion of the overall majority of sales that take place on Amazon. And a majority of the time when we try to figure out where the traffic comes from that Amazon's driving to these listings, we, we leave puzzled, scratching our heads. Um, yeah. So how do you deal with that? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, then this is where we get into a little bit of the weeds of the wholesale model. Um, the buy box. <gasps> Let's talk about the buy box. <laughs> the dirty word. Do you mean that's... like good good buy box or <laughs> <laughs> like good buy b u y box, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, the good buy box. Yeah, that good one. Buy yeah. Box. yeah. So, so I almost every one of us sellers, the the buy box, uh, us private label sellers, we looked at the buy box as kryptonite to the Superman, which is the Amazon sure. business model, mm -hmm. um, and. I don't know why. It's like a kid being afraid of what's in the closet, right? Spoiler alert, it was never the boogeyman, you know? It yeah. was an old suit with moth balls. Sweater. That's what was in the yeah. closet, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so I thought the buy box, and everybody thought the buy box was this big, great mystery. And one of the reasons why is because the emphasis on buy box was always this rush to the bottom, where it's like, if I, if I right. cut your throat by squeezing another penny, Amazon will give me the buy box. And then I say, well, I'm going to undercut you. And eventually, we're all fighting for pennies, right? Um, yeah. That's are, uh, interesting you say that, because one of the things that uh, my wife and I did a long time ago now is we salvaged a product that the the sole distributor of this product not the manufacturer but the sole distributor came to us and said look it's a race to the bottom people are buying and they're just undercut undercut under and and uh so what we did is we undercut everyone and then because we had years of at this time when you had an older account it meant a lot more than it does now it means a lot now but I don't know how much, I really have no idea how much it means now, but it meant a lot more. So what we did is we roped it, uh, roped in the sales and then we started bringing the product price up. And then we also mm -hmm. contacted the other sellers and said, hey, listen, you guys need to stop 
you know, um, violating map, Amazon slapped us map. and, uh, sorry, sure ma- uh, minimum, minimum advertised price. price. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Amazon, Green, we got reported up, by the way for brand owners. We teach that too, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. So we got slapped because the seller reported us and Amazon said, Oh, you guys are price fixing. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> we, that's on our record. Well, it, yeah, it, I guess. But it's, I mean, it's the, it's the game. It's it sometimes is. you don't know where the line is until you cross it, right? So yeah, that's it's like, true. will I ever fault anybody for aggressively testing the rules and the boundaries and, and begging for forgiveness <laughs> instead of asking for permission? No, I get it, right? But yeah. Amazon don't like that. And it's funny. That's now, right, yeah. We, and we there wasn't, at this time, this. there was Amazon no policy so on that. Amazon so Oh, right. That anything can kind of work in any scenario. We can always find one case study here or one use case there, or one thing. So there's obviously times when there are races to the bottom. And there's sure. obviously times where um, if you zoom in on something so close, it can look really big, right? Have you ever seen a movie where they like, there's this extreme zoom in that it starts with and then it pans out and you're looking at like an ant or something that's insignificant, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And so a lot of people zoom in on this buy box because retail arbitragers will, will artificially drive the price down temporarily for one second or one minute or for their three units that they found that they fell off of a back of a truck and they got an incredible mm-hmm. deal. And then mm-hmm. you know, 99.9 of the time, it'll go back to the way things are normally done. There's a price that nobody's gonna get under for a majority of products that you sell on Amazon. Why? Because the brand owner sells it to all his resellers at the same wholesale price. Right. And so yeah. there, everybody basically naturally finds the price limit, the, the lower limit, upper limit, middle, or whatever it is. And that's what it is. And that's generally what it stays. And because there's hundreds of thousands of these products where there is absolutely, in fact, no race to the bottom. There really isn't. A lot of these products that have been selling like clockwork for years, nobody even looks at them. I know that sounds preposterous, but think about all the stuff in your life that once it got going, you didn't even check on it anymore. You know, it's like yeah, for sure. you're supposed to change the the batteries in your smoke alarms every single year before they have that annoying chirp beep, right? <laughs> I mean, guys... Do you Nobody do that? does Are that. You, do you flip your mattress Nobody. every month on schedule? I mean, you should. Uh, you know, right? funny if I don't think my mattress can be flipped. <laughs> yeah. I've got one of those non flippable right? But it's like so yeah. many things. Like we just let it go and it runs. So these products are yeah. selling and nobody thinks about changing the price and nobody's really using this auto, uh, this automatic pricing software to fix all this stuff. Forget all that, right? That's not yeah. how the yeah. world really works. And so what happens is this. You come in. They have inventory that they want to sell the brand owner. They'll be happy to take your money. So you place an order and it could be as little as a couple hundred bucks. It can be as much as a couple thousand. I don't recommend more than 2000. They're like, cool, your money cash is at the bank just the same as anybody else's does, right? Absolutely. And now you're an additional seller on Amazon. And so what's cool is here's how the buy box works. Uh, you're going to sell at the same price everybody else is selling for. It's no race to the bottom. It's, it's There's no race. It's just here's the price. Everybody sells it for yeah. this. And Amazon essentially rotates it through. Here's the caveats, mm-hmm. right? Are you fulfilling by Amazon? Most people mm-hmm. aren't. Um, in most cases, they're not. They're like they have their own warehouse, their own whatever they're doing, right? And they're third party fulfillment, fulfillment by merchant. And so right, the, right. the majority of reasons you will win the buy box is because you're just going to price it what everybody else prices at. And that's not going to change. And you're fulfilled by Amazon. OK, so that's huge. Mm-hmm. And then you're not a dumb seller. Like if somebody needs help, you help them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you just keep your health of your account good, which when you're starting off, uh, you don't have any black marks on your account, right? And even right. if you do mm-hmm. end up some, it's still not the end of the world. You can recover and fix that. But essentially, that's the name of the game. So I like to think of it as a profit pie, guys. So this is what we do, and this is why we like this. Because here's the other reason we like this model is it, I'm I'm tired of taking risk. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe in my younger, dumber, crazier days, I was like, cool, <laughs> let's bet the farm, and if we win, we're rich, and if we're poor, who cares? We were poor anyway, right? Um, right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to play the game that way anymore because I don't need to take necessary or unnecessary risks. Like I want to sell a product where I don't say, can we rank this product? Can we get traffic to this product? I want to sell a product where I say, listen, right now this thing is already selling $10,000 in net profit amongst four resellers. Uh, So the pie is $10,000. It's cut in four slices. If I come in as the fifth fifth slice. slice of the pie, right? Now we're Mm -hmm. cutting it up into five slices. It's still $10,000. That's where I want to start. 
I want to start right. where we know, hey, there's room at the table for another person to eat a slice of the pie. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you would think, this is what I would think, that these other resellers wouldn't like it, that they would they would get upset that their pie got cut. They're not, though, because they have so many pies that they're taking a yeah. slice out of. And again, a majority of them aren't, this is what I like to call it, they're not made for Amazon. Amazon is something they do on the side. They have okay. their own warehouse. They have their own business. Amazon is just extra money, which is the case. If anybody's selling a product outside of Amazon, just throw it up on Amazon. You'll generally see a 10% increase in your sales. You can't right. avoid Amazon. So most people don't make products for Amazon in mind. They make products and then they slap on Amazon right. as an afterthought. Yeah, and unless you're a private model. You're here's pri the most unless important you're thing label, all. This is why private labeling, Amazon. I love this so much uh, yeah. because and again, so when we talk about brands, let's talk about that real fast before we talk about private labels. Um, I'll give you a great example. I was looking at products today uh, and I found a product that cleans hair out of a drain, right? It's like a little thing, Yummy. you run it through the drain. I don't even know what it's called. I wish I had it on hand here, but it's like- a husband. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it, it is essentially a big uh, investment. It's like this little pick. It's, it's a cheap piece of plastic when it's all said and done. And you run it yeah. through somehow the drain and you squirtle it around. I know how it works, right? But it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a hair remover from a drain. In that very obscure, very niche category, there is a category king. There is a brand. Yeah. There's actually two dominant brands that sell a majority of those hair remover, declogger, don't call a plumber <laughs> products, right? Right. Yeah. They sell a lot. In fact, uh, in fact, I'm getting excited, guys. So I'm going to see if I can pull it up because I, I I ran the okay. calculation on it the other day. Uh, I think I can find it here. Okay. Perfect. So here this is, is this the is live, folks. This is yeah. you're seeing this, this in real time at our time. Green you're not. gobbler yeah, you're not. <laughs> grabber. The green gobbler grabber. Uh, okay. Geez. Okay. Right now, this product sells about thirteen thousand seven hundred and forty units per month. Okay. And this is a what the product. Price, the, it, 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 I, you I was going to say the profit on that is probably asinine. It doesn't matter. So, so generally speaking, uh, you know, because we don't cash profit uh, margin at the bank, it doesn't. All we do is run for yeah. the formula. We just assume a fifteen percent profit margin, which usually okay. Okay. is more, right? Um, okay. So, thirteen thousand seven hundred forty uh, people right now are pushing this product through. Um, I mean, units are sold per month of a stupid. Sure. I mean. People don't think this is a brand owner, but somebody owns the space of hair removal from shower drains, and it's the green <laughs> gobbler grabber. That's who owns the space, and they sell 13,740 yeah. units per month. This product sells for a piddly $7.99, because it's a wow. piece of plastic. It's nothing, right? Yeah. It costs yeah. pennies to manufacture at a 15% profit margin. Uh, right now, there are two resellers who are selling this product. Wow. Um, and so the pie, is two sellers are splitting thirteen, or they're they're, split, they're splitting the money. If we come right. in as the third seller, this is how the pl the pie is split up. Split up. All three of us sellers are making five thousand four hundred and eighty nine dollars and thirteen cents per month. Okay. Okay. So this here's where this won't work. If you reach out to the green goblin grabber, whatever it was, I closed it now, so I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> and you say, hey, I want to I want to be a reseller. How do we make that happen? If they say, nope. We don't take resellers. And then you just give up right away. You will not right. get a cut of that pie. Okay. Right. And and that's inevitable. Yeah. You got to bring some to the table. Not necessarily. Now that's what I used to think, right? It's kind of like this. If you ask enough girls out, eventually one of them is going to say yes to you, even if sure. you're ugly and even if you have no game. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a numbers game. So, and that's the dumbest way to play the game, but sometimes dumb is fine if it makes you money. Right. So it's like, <laughs> a lot of brands will just say yes because you are dollars to them. You say, I right. want to place mm -hmm. a small initial inventory order. Uh, here's my budget of 400 bucks, but here's what I'm going to do in order to be coming back and spending more money you if this works out good, right? And they mm -hmm. say, cool, $400 today that I didn't have earlier this morning? Yes, okay? Right. Most of them will not say yes, but about 7% mm -hmm. will say yes. So I'm talking Sounds exact. about- uh, yeah, I was gonna say that's a very exact number. Mathematically speaking, based on the numbers that we have tracked through, it's about seven percent, right? Um, okay. So, so this is first day in school. Don't even know how to write cursive yet, right? 
Mm -hmm. You can just, just by being there anymore. and saying, hi, I reported, <laughs> here's my attendance, here's my trophy for participation, right? Yeah. You can win on Amazon. I know, isn't that crazy? Now, I'm not saying you only do that, but I'm saying if you only do that, you can make a respectable living selling without having to, you know, clip coupons on Sunday at three in the morning to get a discounted right. thing that you can sell yeah. a couple <laughs> units of on uh, Amazon as a retail arbitrager. Nor, do I, nor am I saying that you have to get these great skills of being able to take a brand new product with, from a brand new brand that you've sourced from China and somehow get people on Amazon to know about you and sell, right? Ultimately, if you yeah, do private label like that, you will make a lot more money because you you won't. And, and have let's be to. honest, to a lot of people that what you just those two avenues of arbitrage, private label, for a lot of people out there, that probably sounds painful. Yeah, for a lot well, of people. I mean, out it, there. it requires picking up the phone. Yeah, That's well, yeah, too. on the uh, obviously on the private label side, it's it's well, it, you you this, figure out the, the whole thing. The scariest part about wholesaling. Yeah is talking to a brand. People psych themselves out before they even start. So hopefully what I've said yeah. today uh, eases some of that concern for, for people. Uh, but here's the other thing. Here's how I feel good about doing this, is I do look to be of value as soon as I reach out to a brand. So let's talk about how we can be of value. Managed by stats sure. is one of the most powerful ways we are of value to uh, these brands. We're like, this is right. the kind of reporting yeah. that we can provide to you. Now, you know, it's like, they think we're some wizards with a bunch of monkeys crunching spreadsheets, right? <laughs> we're just using managed by stats, which is great because we're the, we're, we're we're the, the monkeys. monkeys. Yeah. 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 yeah you know, we're proud of it. Someone's a wizard. Numbers, right? <laughs> and, and we can Phillip's do this the wizard. Yeah. Number of brands, essentially. And I love that because it feels so personal to the brand. But yeah, yet it's yeah. so impersonal to us because it's all done yeah. automatically, essentially. So we say these are the data points we can track for you. Um, these are the ways in which we can get your back. This is how we're going to help you out. These are the eyes. This is the watchdog that we bring to the table. Um, you mentioned minimum advertising price, which I would consider a 401, not a 101 advanced lesson. This is PhD mm -hmm. graduate level. Not for us because it's hard, <laughs> right? But because 99% mm -hmm. of people in the industry or outside the industry think map is something you find directions on in this business, right? Yeah, uh, right. Minimum advertising price is essentially a thing that can be defended by the brand, but it needs to be defended. So if people That's are right. violating right. the minimum advertising price and they're advertising your product from lower than what you have mandated as the brand owner, that's a big no-no. Now you need yeah. somebody to enforce that. You can be the map enforcer. You can be right. the thing. You say, listen, I wanna resell your product. All I, I, I know I'm new, you could take a chance on me, but here's why you're gonna love to have me as a reseller. Because I've already identified these four people over here that are non-compliant with your map. Do you mm -hmm. want to continue to have them tarnish your great name? Or do you want me to step in and help you out? And they're yeah. like, uh, I'll take your call now all of a sudden, right? Yeah. Um, I, here's a funny one. Guys, you would think this is a one in a million. It, it's more of like a one in a five, right? Uh, okay. I was going to say, is it 7%? <laughs> this is about 20%. A misspelling okay. in the title or a complete oh, lack yeah. of the actual keyword that people are searching. So even though search, yeah. Searching, yeah. search traffic isn't dominant, it's still a good 50 chunk. 50% is money. still 50%. 50% mm -hmm. is still 50%. And so I can't tell you how many times people have a listing on Amazon because the brand owner, nine out, nine out of 10 times, the brand owner doesn't even create the listing on Amazon. Whoever right. had a retail arbitrager could have created it. I found one unit and now I'm going to be the one that creates the listing on Amazon. And, and right. brand owners now think they're screwed. They're like, oh, I guess we got to go with that. Well, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. Let's fix the misspelling of your yeah. listing. We saw this with a right. Star Wars Pez dispenser. There was, <laughs> I think we showed you, Curtis, right? Yeah. Um, yep. There was a misspelling in the title. Which the you would think, you know, it's. It's a fairly well-known brand name, <laughs> both Pez I mean, and Star Wars. Pez, yep. Pez and Star Wars, like two little mom and pop sort of operations. As going iconic as they can understand how they can make a mistake like that right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, oh my God, I could go on and on and on and on on the atrocities that are committed yeah. because people aren't used to this business. They're used to end caps and retail yeah. outlets. They're used to staging products that way. They're used to dealing with procurement agents who manage all this stuff for them. They don't think yeah, in terms the, of what e-commerce There's a trackable right? legitimacy that they're used to, which Amazon just and throws a gigantic yeah, wrench into. The SOPs are oh, in place too, yeah, which there are right. none for this. Yeah. That's right. And, there are, and so all we got to do, and there's 27 different points 
uh, of optimization that I've discovered that are mm. little hinges that swing big doors, meaning that you barely nice have to try to fix these things. And if you do fix even one or two of them, it can be a tremendous impact to the brand. Like I'll give you another one, guys. Like Amazon flat out tells you, do not use other people's brand names in your advertising. So if I'm selling something, a shoe, I can't put Nike, Reebok, Puma, and all this other stuff in there. Uh, sure. Amazon says, absolutely not. At first they used to say, yeah, don't do that, but we'll look the other way. Now they're like, yeah. no, bad now dog, Nike don't do that. Now Nike and Puma right? have hit them with shoes okay. and they've stopped letting that happen. <laughs> Yeah, but here's the funny thing, guys. Most brands that we see, we're talking, we're not talking big brands here. We're talking the green gobbler of their market brands, right? right? Yeah. For a weird, obscure product, they're top of the mind. They're the first go-to for whatever reason, okay? Yeah. Most of these brands don't even advertise for their own brand name. Yeah. Which is crazy. Which is Because they're so the only one who can. <laughs> not only are they the only one that can, by the way, Amazon still, even though they say don't advertise for other brand names, it's not like they stop you up front. They catch you yeah. later in the act and then they stop you. So yeah. all these brands, we can show them, hey, your competitor's advertising on your brand name. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it and takes it, that awareness to actually then stop it. It does, and I mean, how easy is it to, you know, like again, they don't know how yeah. easy it is to run Amazon ads. Amazon ads are uh, the easiest ads I've ever run. Not like Facebook where we have to like right. demographic, target images, pictures. We don't have to write copy to, to advertise yeah. on Amazon. We just say, here's my product, which is my listing. So they write the copy for you, Amazon does. Mm -hmm. Here's the brand, you know, here's the keyword I want, which is brand name. And we don't have to pay anything for it. A, a penny, five cents, nothing, right. because we're the brand owner. Uh, and yeah, so we right. get that position because it's not just about how much you pay, it's how relevant you are. And we're 100% yeah, totally. relevant to that brand. Yes. We also then explain to them, listen, now you're showing up in two spots. Imagine, this is how I always like to talk to brands. So they, they know retail. So now you have not only one shelf fully that's yours, we now give you two shelves. And they're yeah, like, yeah. ooh, two shelves good. And then yeah, we make two. a deal that way, right? Yeah. Two shelves better than one shelf. Two shelves better than one. Right? <laughs> being facetious to prove a point of course right but, but it is here you, you're being facetious but it's an accurate it's, facetiousness it's, it's an accurate it's very it's very accurate right? facetious to you and and it's funny because it, it is it is really what you know you we mentioned this earlier but it's just a different type of value br you're bringing to that brand. You're bringing a value in that they don't understand something that the average private labeler, and frankly, anyone who goes through most any course about Amazon knows more than a lot of these big brands. You're bringing yeah. them expertise in a field that could, like if you're shitty at it, if the brand is shitty at it, they can add 10%. If they're I good like at it. I think about it this way, guys. Um, I'm not very fast on a 100 meter dash. Um, but I can win every race if I'm running against four-year-old kids, right? I use car. I use a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so we are intentionally finding races in which we can win first place. We are intentionally right. finding games in which just mer barely, merely being adequate, we can take home yeah. the gold medal. And this is one of those instances. Now, is this a rare thing? Yeah, absolutely is. I've been yeah. searching. This is my Moby Dick. Um, I've been yeah. searching for it online my whole life. And I found it here. And I don't see it changing anytime soon because, you know, Amazon's market share, it grows every yeah. single year, but it's yeah. barely yeah. what it can be. I like to think this of is, Amazon uh, as, as Bam Bam from, from uh, the Flintstones. You know that cartoon, right? <laughs> yeah. They it's have my that son's baby nickname. that's like Carry four on. years old that's already <laughs> bigger than Barney and Fred. It yeah. is like, Bam, he hasn't Bam. even hit puberty yet. Bam, Amazon Bam. is Bam Bam. They have not even hit puberty yet. It's yeah. true. Uh, it's yeah. true. The, the, the well, and it's in, why there's an opportunity, though. It's it's right. the reason that there's an opportunity. Any business goes through the business cycle where they have this maturation stage and then where they start to plateau. It, it, the problem is that e-commerce hasn't even hit its plateau. So it's impossible for Amazon to even. Yeah, Amazon yeah. doesn't even know when it's going to plateau because it's in a segment of retail shopping that is constantly growing. You know what this is, is you, you might not remember this actually, but Ooh. do you remember the dot-com bubble? That was like oh, 1943, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. Just kidding. Back I mean, it wasn't day, World we War II. We had a dot-com bubble. God. So this is, this is the dot-com bubble only for physical products, yeah. I think, because your, your first version, so first you had 
everyone needed a website because the websites were the future and it was then everyone needed an e-commerce website because now everyone's on the internet now you have to be on amazon and on amazon yeah. at the now amazon's at the point where you need to be optimized for amazon so this is this is the next logical point in e-commerce business for big business who has e e what are we, ten, let's just call it, let's just call it 10 years that, or, or 15 years really that Amazon has been progressing to the stage. This is only the next point of organization for businesses online. And that's- yeah. And eventually this will change. Let's just be very clear here. Yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, brand it's gonna go today, away. The brand owners today started when Amazon wouldn't even allow you to sell your products on Amazon. A majority of mm -hmm. them who built their brands started offline in Amazon. They thought it was a forest somewhere in South America, right? Yeah, totally. Um, Let alone a bookstore. However, store. over right. time, there will be more first-generation Amazon sellers who started their brand on Amazon. We've helped a yeah. lot of them, by the way, right? Hell, Anchor. Um, and eventually, they, mm -hmm. will, they will reach that point. I give it 10 to 15 years. So we have yeah. about a 10 year golden age period right now where the changing of the guard hasn't occurred yet. Right. Eventually yeah, right. it is gonna be the other way around. People will start on Amazon first and then say, oh, maybe we wanna put it on those old antiquated things called stores shelves, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but right now it's not the way it's, it's gonna be. And it's gonna take quite a <laughs> while. Like guys, let's put it this way. The cable company still has a majority share of how people watch television. The yeah, cable company. Absolutely. Talk yeah. about a dinosaur, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Eventually, we all thought it was going to happen already that everybody was going to cut cords, right? Uh, it's so yeah. true. It I, so I, true. I, yeah. it will. My dad it has will. cable and he actually has never even turned it on. And yet he yeah. still has cable because it's considered like part of the house. Cable. When yeah. I quit yeah. using it, I still waited three years. That's how long it takes. <laughs> for a battleship to change direction, right? Totally. And so eventually yeah. it will. Now, here's the thing I always say, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. This is the second right. best time is today, right? So yeah. if you start mm -hmm. today and you're in Amazon before everybody wakes up, when they do wake up, you actually will be even more valuable. And this is why I love private yeah. label. Because we go to these brands and we're like, dude, why don't you add this skew? Why don't you do this thing? Why don't you do that? And they stoutly say, nope. I'm okay with this. And then we say, do you mind if we become complimentary to you in this regard and we get their blessing to add our own mm. products to it? And now we have this hybrid model. We private label off the back of the reseller data right. that we mm -hmm. get in conjunction with the brand as a partner. And now yeah. Yeah. we have an advantage that we don't need a search engine for. And I think that is yeah. unbelievable. If you look at the the brands that sell for the most on Amazon on Exit, they're almost always hybrid brands where there's a combination in their portfolio of things that they resell and things that they themselves own. And let's look at Amazon does it. Amazon has their own brand that they sell uh, as a first party amongst third party sellers. Walmart has no. their Sam's Club. <laughs> uh, you know, Kirkland is to the Costco, right? Yep. It's like, yep. it's yep. hidden in plain sight, guys. Everybody's Toyota doing it Lexus. and nobody's aware of it. <laughs> let's just model the best. Yeah. yeah. Well, so there's a couple things about this because we've we've touched on so much, but like here, let's give a little bit of recap here because we've touched on a lot. So arbitrage, the, the problem there is there's a air of illegitimacy in the sense of you're not selling something that you're actually invited to sell. On top of that, you're talking about a platform that doesn't want you to sell it because especially since you're not going to be sending in onesie twosie things into Amazon, you're selling it and they're not getting their cut for, you know, the being work. A pro yeah, yeah, they're not getting that 15% that they want. So there's a disadvantage in that the platform is always going to be trying to eliminate you. Whereas what we're talking about here, where you're being almost like a certified reseller, in a sense, at least that's what yeah. you're going for. You're you're more invited than anything else. Because at the end of the day, if we look at this party that is Amazon right now, because it is kind of that cool kid party where it's accepted, but not accepted by all quite yet, which is why it's still only half of the e-commerce game. If it were accepted by all, there would be no opportunity here. There wouldn't be this growth and this change. But the fact of the matter is Amazon always wants legitimacy. You have these major brands who don't put any work into making a listing that Amazon wants you to have. So Amazon's always going to reward a better listing, 
a better you know, set of keywords in that list, listing, better images, because that is their platform. Their platform is internet search engine for retail. <laughs> it's like, yep. that's kind of its equivalent, right? Yep. So essentially this, what we're talking about here is just a little bit further behind private label in terms of evolution. Here's what I mean by that. Like private label going back 10 years ago, let's say seven years ago, is very different than private label today. You could go on there, barely be advertising at all and make a ton of money. You I, could yeah, do that. That's what I did without advertising. Exactly, yeah. right. Yeah, your brand is the perfect example. You didn't need to advertise no. and you could get that number one spot where today yeah. that's an impossibility, but that's not a problem. What that is, is Amazon's evolving. Yep. And that evolution does hit a point where it hits a stability where it is no longer in need of evolution because it's where it's it's at a prime stasis right or status and where we're talking about these huge brands who just walk onto the scene know that they'll increase by 10 percent they don't need to evolve in their mind but then amazon dictates that they have to because other people can sell a knockoff of their brand and do better simply because they know the art of Amazoning better than these major brands. So it's just, it's, it's a niche mm -hmm. and that niche needs to be filled right now in order for Amazon to fully evolve. And until that, th all these brands catch up through their own action or through other people's action, this is a market. It, I'm, I'm stressing this and making it almost overly simple because people are either gonna take advantage of this, or like you said, they're gonna look back 20 years later and go, darn, why didn't I actually do this? Right, it's gonna be the latter for most. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's we, the latter? We what? drug our feet at first. <laughs> I said, yeah, it. yeah, totally, I know yeah. exactly what the, you mean. The latter. <laughs> the most, latter, okay. Yeah. No, <laughs> I was uh, like, a ladder, yeah, you climb yeah. and eventually yeah, you get to the- Most people are gonna climb, no, the okay, latter. Yeah, sure. Most people are gonna go, darn, why wasn't I exactly. exactly. a part of that? Yeah. <laughs> So it's I'm just making this way that you've described it. And again, brands can yeah. be tiny. Uh, it's amazing to me how many brands are so small that still sell 10,000 units a month. And again, right. mm -hmm. most of these brands don't even now they know they're on Amazon. This is how traditionally these smaller brands that I'm talking about find out they're on Amazon. They wake up one day to a fire, some product fire that needs to be put out. And then they discover my products on Amazon. <laughs> I didn't put it on Amazon. I know. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I, that is guys, a certain I tell interesting you, for, thing about, of Amazon. In 2015, 2016, 2017, I got well known for being an Amazon expert. Uh, and mm -hmm. I'm also, because of all these other businesses that I've done over the years, I'm pretty well connected with some really higher ups, right? Um, and I would get a call once a week from a big brand that says, Jason, how do I get these people off of Amazon? Mm -hmm. They're selling my product on Amazon and I don't want them to. And then they got these ugly images on it. They got this listing. I got seller feedback. <laughs> they didn't know what seller feedback was like. I'm getting one, right. star, uh, one star reviews. I'm like, what do I do about it? I'm like, well, first of all, you can't do anything about it, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I Embrace said, second of all, thought, yeah. you can fix these reviews because they violate Amazon's terms of service because that's seller yeah. feedback. That's not product review. I said, I can get those off of it just like that. Magic, right? And they're like, you yeah. can do that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's a violation of Amazon. I said, but listen. 50,000 bucks. Fight. Yeah. They always wanted to yeah. fight it. <laughs> and I'm like, you're going to fight it and no lose need. or you can embrace yeah. it and win. And I would, I was tired of having that conversation though. And I, it, it, but that's how it is. A lot of these brands get forced on Amazon because anybody who even gets one of their products can sell it new or used. That's the right, right of first sell doctrine. It's a legal doctrine in the United States. This is why eBay exists. This is why mm -hmm. there are things like yard sales and thrift stores. You can't right. stop this from happening. Oftentimes they would say to me, well, yeah, I have resellers, but they're supposed to sell it only on their site or in their store. Right. Right. I'm like, good luck with that. They say, how do I stop yeah, this? I said, this is what I would tell them. Uh, guys, I love this. I'd say, I said, how much, how much product do you sell to resellers? And they'd be like a million dollars a year. So here's how you stop it. Stop selling them yeah. the product. And they said, right. yeah. but I, I don't want to do that. I said, why not? Because that's a million dollars a year. So you either get a million dollars a year and have them sell your product and how they want right. to sell your product, or you do it yourself. And then they always walked away realizing it was better to have these resellers. However, with yeah. that said, every single time these resellers were doing something to besmirch their good name. And right. so right. if we can help them fix that, we will be their it's darling invaluable. and eventually. Guys, here's that the evolution. Was, yeah, here's that the was evolution. my very first model. 
here's the evolution. Yeah, sorry, this is what's so great. You will get exclusive reseller status pretty soon if you play your cards right. Because right. they're not going to yeah. sell to 10 people to cut the pie up 10 ways and babysit 10 individuals. They're just going to sell it to you and they're going to quit selling it to other resellers. Yeah. And then there right. is no there, there is no worrying about buy box nonsense. And there is no worrying about, oh my God, this is somebody else's product. This is not my product, right? Uh, right. And, and in fact, guys, oftentimes you will get exclusive contracts that say guaranteed minimum of $150,000 per year no matter mm -hmm. what and anything on top of that is extra so oftentimes you can negotiate contracts that are on their own six figures on a brand independent awesome. of what product it's sold yep yeah. i mean there's guys we're getting way too in the weeds well I mean, yeah, yeah and yeah. what i was gonna say is that we need to cut cut it anyways for two reasons one i want you to give uh, a couple more valuable tidbits but i want them only for the managed oh, yeah. stats guys Forgot call it that. selfish but it's just but it's true. how I roll. Uh, no, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Here's the thing. Uh, we, we, we really enjoy providing tons of value to everyone. We really do because we, we just kind of, I guess our business model on this is that we figure if we can provide more value on that, the whole industry will rise as a whole and it'll just everyone, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So, but that's we do the, also. That's the one I was trying to say a few <laughs> podcasts ago. It's like rising. A, a rising wave will <laughs> always crash. No, 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 no. That's a wrong direction. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, at the but we also do want to have something special for our guys internal. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take the second half of this podcast because I have a couple. We have a couple things specifically we've talked about that you know we're we're inching to get your your perspective on. Yeah. So um, with that, what we'll do here, Jason, is we'll kind of do a little sign off for YouTube, Apple, Spotify, all that good stuff, and then we'll hop on over to uh, our private Facebook user group and do the rest there. Sound good? Excellent. Beautiful. So um, with that, everyone who's here, uh, mainly on YouTube if you're looking at us, because I don't think that we visually are any other platform, right? Nope. No. So YouTube, like us, subscribe, hit, hit the, the bell, bell for icon. notifications, because frankly, the subscribing means diddly shit. It means absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just true. Uh, yeah. on, on, uh, we don't like diddly shit, people. That's right. <laughs> on uh, everything else, give us a five star because like we've mentioned time and time again, we can still say that because we are not selling on Amazon. We want a unabashed five star review. And, and if you Anything less, put it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. We, we only want, want five star reviews. We appreciate so, that. Yeah. <laughs> No, but also give it a review, share it to other people if you if you think that Jason here has given some crazy value, which we already know he has, so share it, get yeah. it done. Also, we will have links in the comments for anything that's been gone over that yeah. is link worthy. And if you have questions, comments, anything that you want to know, questions for Jason, please put it in the comments. Also, um, we're gonna put a link in the description that's going to a webinar that Jason's doing on in the, eight days on the 18th. What time is it? Yeah. Do you remember the time or what? Well, we can Noon put it Pacific. in the bottom, it's fine. Noon Pacific, Noon Pacific. So that's in basically a week from when we're recording this um, and we're gonna be dropping this on Monday. So it will be for you guys who are seeing this five days, four days later. Yeah. So um, we are very excited for that webinar and um, you'll see lots of it if you're a Managed by Stat subscriber because we're gonna be sending you a couple emails because the fact of the matter is we know that this strategy is extremely important and we don't want you to miss out. Yeah, on and like I said, this was, so what, what Jason and his partners have perfected is what I stumbled along in my very beginning of selling on Amazon. Yeah. And I was very successful very quickly in the beginning on Amazon. So very cool. Yeah. So thank with you. that, thank you everyone for listening. YouTube, Apple, Watching. Spotify. Peace out.